everyone, my name is Mikey Bouchereau. I'm going to be showing you how to use uh, Core Melt Screen Replace. Um, after working with the Core Melt uh, Complete V2 for a while, I've come to the realization that this Screen Replace plugin is phenomenal simply because it saves you a lot of time when you're trying to edit something very quick and simple and you really wish you had a nice blue sky, but uh, like a lot of things outside, you tend to get things overexposed in the sky because your subject is more important than the background. Now obviously you can go into programs like Motion or After Effects to do a sky replace and there's definitely ways to do that. But right inside your timeline in Final Cut you can actually use uh, the Core Mount Sky Replace plugin. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. I'm going to go to my effects browser right over here and we're going to go to our video filters and we're going to go to Core Mount Color Tools we're going to go down to Sky Replace. There it is. Now I have two clips in my timeline before we actually look at it. I have this simple photo with an overexposed kind of background, some flowers. And it's just a photo doing some uh, keyframes. Um, and then I have some video of a house with, again, a little bit of an overexposed sky. So we're going to work on two very different ones. This one is a really white background, overexposed sky. This one right here does have a little bit of blue, but it's not quite what we want. So we're going to do and apply this to the very first one, our photo. Take my sky replace, place it right there, double click, and I will go ahead and load that to the viewer and go to my filters. Now one thing I've realized is it sky replace works better if you turn the filter off and then use the eyedropper to select the old color. So there we go, I've selected the color. And I'm going to turn it back on and instantly it gives me this pretty good, you know, you know, if we scan through this, you know, right now. I'm working in HD, and uh, it's a pretty good sky replace. But maybe I want to go ahead and, you know, make sure that sky is just a little bit more throughout the whole thing. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out in my canvas. Uh, just Command minus to zoom out. So I can really go ahead and set up my sky top and my sky bottom. You notice the sky top, as soon as I click on the plus icon here, I'll be able to change that point. Of course, I can drag it down and, you know, once you'll notice it actually flips around, that's because I actually passed the sky bottom point. But I'm going to go sky top just be above the image. And I want to set that back at zero here. And I like round numbers, so I'm going to go uh, negative 385 there. But it got kind of close to where I wanted to be. Sky bottom, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take it down. And I want to drag that sky bottom to be down, probably down towards the bottom of my image frame. Because this image right here has a lot of, you know, sky in it. So I'm gonna again I'm gonna set that to zero here and I like round numbers so I'll say uh, instead of 390 I'll do 385 kind of even across the whole way. There we go. So here is my you know sky replace. It's did a pretty good job so far. Um, I didn't really have to go anywhere else to do this. I didn't have to go to motion or after effects to do it. Um, there are some tools in here and that's really it. <laughs> um, I can change the color alpha of the original which you can see how much of it is actually being applied. I changed the new color alpha, how much see-throughness I'm going to have with that new blue color, so I can kind of find a medium there. If I wanted to change the color, obviously I can click on the well and choose any color I want. You know, if I wanted a purple sky, a red sky, whatever. Um, I can diffuse the gradient. One thing I've noticed is if you diffuse the gradient, it gives you a good look, but you get these edgings on the side as well as on the top. And since I moved my uh, sky top to be above it, we don't see it at the top of that, you know, for me, what I'm doing, I don't think that works perfect on this one, but you might find a use for it. You can always invert the gradient, so obviously it's blue at the bottom and white on top. Okay, before we look at the tolerance and the softness area, and this, this whole category is called key, I can close that up and uh, bring it back out, but inside here you can actually see the key, or the mass that is creating. You'll notice it's white up here and kind of gray down there. Why? Because, well, that's our gradient of what our you know old color and our new color is producing for us, our sky top and bottom. You can obviously adjust the tolerance where it's going to make it really, really white and really strong. But you'll notice as we do that, we're losing some detail in our flowers. And if we go to the opposite way, we have our flowers, all the information there, in fact, including some artifacting that happened around, because this is a JPEG image. Um, we don't want to go that much. I'm going to go to about point... I'm going to go 0.2, which is probably pretty good. And of course, you can add some softness or take away softness to it. Uh, you'll see right now it's really kind of hard edges there. And if I turn that key off, you can actually see what that looks like. Very harsh edges around here. I'm going to go back to probably about a 0.25 maybe on this one. 
which looks pretty good. Um, again, you can invert the key to flip it back and forth if you want, which is really not what we want. Um, I can add a key blur, which again, if we look at the key itself, um, I can look at the blur, and you can see I'm blurring that whole thing out, which might be kind of a cool effect on its own. You get this kind of glow when you have the, a blur around it. It doesn't look as natural, but I'm going to turn that back off. And the last thing you have is this mix, which is the mix from the original to your new, which is really, really nice. Um, in this case, on this image, I'm only going to bring the mix down to say 80, and I'll do 90. There we go, so it's a little subtle. And there's my new sky replace on my flowers. I can go ahead and reset that and turn it off so you can see. So it's very blown out and white. And as soon as I turn it back on, I actually have a blue sky here. Um, again, I can even boost up my alpha original, my new color so it's a little bit darker. Again, I can even go in here, go to a more bluish color and get a different color there. Um, in fact, I probably want to go a little bit more aqua blue. There we go. There we go. So there's my sky. Now, moving on, that was just a photo, but here I have the same type of move. I have a pan out of a house that I shot for a real estate agent. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to apply my sky replace here. And this is HD footage. And you'll notice right away, um, it has done some work for me. Again, I can turn it off and then on. Um, I do have some issues with the sky, you know, with the house top up here. But that's okay. You know, that's just going to bring some detail and make it look like a, a little bit of the sky is bleeding. Again, one thing I realized is if you turn the sky replace off, choose your eyedropper, pick the sky color, kind of a neutral area there. There we go. We'll turn it back on, see how that works. Now, it's a little strong, and that's okay. You know, you can kind of tweak your, your alpha of your original. We'll keep the original there. Uh, again, since I'm already zoomed out in here, I can change my sky top, which you'll notice the sky top is really, really low. So I'm going to drag that just above here. There we go. Now again, I'll put that to zero, and I like round numbers, so that way if I ever have to keyframe anything, I can really do this um, easily. So I'm going to do negative 365 there. And the sky bottom, I think that's probably okay where it is, but I am going to move it up just a bit because the sky line kind of ends right here where the house is. You know, it does go down a little bit more here inside the trees, but, you know, even if we look through the rest of the clip, it, you really don't see it that much. And this tree is, you know, going to be a little, you know, distracting there. So I'm going to go up to probably about mid-frame here, and I'll, again, I'll type in my numbers, I'll go there, and I'll say negative 95, okay, and again, we can turn this off and on, you can see right away, it's actually done quite a bit here, but we're going to play with it a little bit more. Again, that diffuse gradient, you know, you can see what it does, it brings in some edging up here, which for this one definitely does quite a bit. So here I'm going to go to about 20 on this one just because it is a little bit more video, natural sky. Um, again, invert gradient, you'll see it actually applies it to the house, which is not what we want at all here. Now again, when we look at the key, I'm actually gonna show the key before I go ahead and play with the tolerance. You know, obviously here, I can go to the tolerance completely blown out, and if we turn that off, you can see it's really just a blue kind of um, gradient on top, which might be what you're looking for. Um, so I'm gonna bring that tolerance down a little bit. And I'm going to choose the softness, and go right there. We'll do a little soft on it. Okay. And I can blur the key just a bit. Let's go ahead and look at this here. Blur the key just a bit. Here we go. And maybe take this down see how it looks as we kind of go through it. That doesn't look too bad. We do have some problems here, but again, you know, it's a very quick filter that you can add uh, throughout this. And I think that's all I'm going to do for this right here. Um, so there is my sky replace on this clip right here and this clip right here. If you go ahead and take a look at it with it turned off, here's the sky replace with it turned off, very blown out, not very pretty looking. Here it is with this one turned on. And you can always do a few different things here. You know, you can click on um, the teardropper and try to get a little bit different colors. Um, sometimes I'll look at the spectrum and take the blue and try to, you know, play with a different color that it might be more towards the white. Um, again, you can always, oops, turn off the sky replace. Oops, cancel here. Turn off the sky replace. 
uh, you can use the magnifying glass to really find a blue shade that you are looking for. There we go. Hit OK on that one. Turn it back on. So there you go. And of course, you know, you can take your tolerance way down. You know, we did 0.2 last time, 0.3. So, you know, I'll do 0.25. There we go. And again, if you turn this off and on, you can see that there's a lot going on up here. Um, so here is my, you know, my sequence here. I'm going to render this out. Through the you know magic of editing, my render is done. I have it completely done. The reason why I wanted to render it out and not just kind of show you, you know, frames from the video is I didn't have a transition that I tossed on here, which is the blowout cross dissolve, which is another thing from the Core Melt series. Um, right here under their gadget editor tools, they have blowout crossfade. Um, and I think it's a really cool looking transition. We won't really go into it today, but I'll probably end up doing a couple more from them. Uh, from the Core Melt plugins because they're really, really well done. Um, one thing to know is currently, uh, or maybe I don't know, but currently they are not working with uh, After Effects if you have Snow Leopard installed like I have. And right now I'm actually using QuickTime X to screen record. So here's my timeline playing back. You know, it's my pan in with keyframes and the screen replies. Here's my blowout, and there's my new clip with the screen mode. Again, if we just kind of play around this playhead real quick, I want you to see this blow out. It's a really nice looking transition. Um, it's full on bloom kind of effect. It blows out the whites, um, almost like an additive dissolve, but it is a little bit cleaner, a little bit brighter. Um, and of course, if we look at these, I'm gonna duplicate these clips real quick just so you can see them. Um, I'm gonna turn off these filters for these guys right here just so we can kind of compare them right on top of each other. So here is the uh, sky replace on this clip right here. I'll turn that track off. You can see the blue being added to the sky. And same thing here, you know, here's our flower. Blue in the sky, no longer blue. Um, and one of the things someone has, you know, while I was working with someone, he said, oh, but you're losing information in here. Um, that was already blown out and lost on the original image, so it's not like you're losing anything by using that uh, built-in key that basically replaces the sky. Um, I love the sky replace um, filter just because instead of having to take my footage out um, of motion and going to After Effects or Motion or any whatever your compositing program is, I don't have to. I can literally just use it right here, um, and it's really, really great to just be able to do it right inside Final Cut while you're working. And if anything, it can be at least a temporary fix before it comes time for your final uh, go and take it into your final grade or whatever you're working in. All right. Well, that is Core Melt's Sky Replace, and also their Blowout Cross Dissolve. Uh, my name is Mikey Bouchot. I'll have a couple more trans, a uh, couple more videos from Core Melt. Um, if you have questions, please feel free to contact me, email me.